if I can give somebody a better start than what I had, if I can give them the tools and knowledge and resources that I now have and give it to them at a younger age than me, like that's incredible. I wish everybody could have a relationship. That's what life is, a relationship with someone you love. The main thing is just to push yourself. I would say that's the main thing that you have to keep in mind. When you're that determined and you're that um, focused on a goal and a result, you have to have that enthusiasm to carry you through. I worked at CBS, I worked at Fox, I worked at Oprah, I worked at ABC Disney, and now I'm at NBC Universal. Well, my name is Solomon Hicks. My name is Mike Muse. I'm Audrey Smalls. My name is Georgie Page. My name is Michelle Ward White. I started playing guitar when I was six and then kind of got tired of it after a while so I took a break for about two months and once I got back into it that was actually my first call and realized that I actually really loved the guitar and that I'd want to do it when I get older. I'm a native New Yorker and I like to tell people I was born, bred, toasted, buttered, jellied, jammed and honeyed in Harlem. So I'm a Harlem girl and now I live on 55th Street just off 5th Avenue in a wraparound penthouse. And Donald Trump is my neighbor. Uh, so I'm a hard worker and I'm a creative person and um, love the arts. I'm a runner. I love nature. I love the environment. And um, I love people. There's tremendous value in having a woman, an African-American woman, who has, you know, a demonstrated ability to produce for the biggest and the brightest and to be calm under pressure and who understands different facets of this business, helping to make decisions about how we grow the next generation. Mike Muse is a guy who goes against conventional wisdom. Um, I am a person who has felt like I didn't fit into any box, um, nor did I want to conform to be any box. I'm a guy who's always believed that life is what you make of it and you can create your own path and your own destinies and not allow other people to create those for you. I walked in, I was about 13 going on 40, and I had my guitar and my amp. And then the, um, the doors were closed and it has glass doors. And I walked, and I, like I looked in, this is like the first time I actually seeing a big band before. Here I am, with the company called the ground crew. Now I got that name from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King from his speech that he gave in 1964, December the 10th, when in Oslo, Norway, he received the Nobel Peace Prize. And there are two mentions in his speech about he couldn't take the flights to freedom if it hadn't been for the ground crew. Uh, I went to the University of Michigan, uh, where I majored in industrial engineering and I did some nuclear chemical research. Um, and it wasn't something that I found myself enjoying. Um, when I graduated, I had a great offer with a major consulting firm out here in New York City, and I actually turned them down to be a bartender. Um, I don't even drink, uh, but I wanted to do something that was completely out of the ordinary, right? Kind of breaking from the norm um, and really discovering self and really discovering who I am. Um, it was in that process and in that journey that I got approached to uh, ask to be part of the music business. I can play the pop stuff, I just choose not to. So if you definitely want to be a good innovator and just be, be different, I just say don't follow the crowd. The interesting thing is, they were looking for a colored girl, this is 1962, to work in the financial district. They had a couple of black men down there, so I was the very first colored girl on Wall Street going to school. They sent me to school. I'll just get up, I try to get my chores out, chores out the way, then just practicing, because I'm at the spot that I am now, you know, I'm, I'm in a pretty decent, um, playing at 17, being a pretty much well-rounded musician, I always know I can get better. So just putting in more and more work into my musicianship. So I think, you know, whether I'm at work or just even privately, I'm curious, I'm adventurous, I want to see what the day holds and I want to see what, what you know, challenges there are and, and and um, get out and solve problems. And Every day I wake up, it's a new journey. Um, it's a new experience. I never know what God has in store for me. I mean, I may go to sleep thinking I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z, come tomorrow morning, and I get up and actually have to do A, B, and C. Day-to-day -day responsibilities are to really oversee all the ways that people can potentially become a part of NBC, um, from our internship programs, 
uh, all the way through mentoring and leadership and diversity programs, not for one division, but for all 30,000 of our employees through all of our different businesses. Let's say if I'm doing a, a blues concert, I usually like to think of all the blues artists that I know in general and think of how they would play the song that I'm about to play, then try to get that mindset. And then if I'm at a jazz concert, think about all the jazz guitar players I know or jazz musicians and think how would they approach the songs that I'm about to play and try to imitate that. I'll uh, finish school, I'll hang out with my friends during school, then right after, you know, we'll go to the park or across Central Park, then we'll all just hang out on the west side, then after a while around six or seven, that's when I'm usually saying, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go to New Jersey or Connecticut or wherever I have to play for the night. The, the biggest trait is not being afraid to fail. Um, and I think when you're not afraid to fail, you go extremely hard and aggressive to achieving whatever goal that you have because you don't believe that there's any doubt that you might not make it. Because so many people who go in business have these fantastic ideas, but they have not a clue how to be in business. They just have ideas. So in order to be an entrepreneur, to be an innovator, to make change, you have to be well-rounded. I was seeing other guitar players, like um, I was more into rock people like Jimi Hendrix, Santana, Angus Young from ACDC, seeing how they play and realizing that if I practice hard enough, maybe one day I could be like that. What's exciting about it is my job at its best is really about helping people get their break, get their shot, understand what our opportunities are, and to grow and develop them. I'd say the thing that I enjoy most is seeing the people's reaction of when they hear music and see them get up and dance and see them enjoy themselves. In high school, they gave me the opportunity to contribute. They said, hey, we've got this idea. We want to do a scholarship um, in conjunction with the Hall of Fame. And my dad was being inducted, and they wanted to kick something off. But we need something, ex a little extra hook or a little something extra special. So a friend and I went down to the University of Minnesota, went into the library, and started looking at journals. And um, we came up with this idea that there should be a mentorship component. And we suggested that for the scholarship. And it's been one of the things that's really distinguished it. My first role model would definitely be my parents because they're such hard workers and they kind of put that in me to just keep working on the, my weaknesses. But one of them was a um, guitar player that just died last March. His name was uh, Melvin Sparks. And he was definitely one of my biggest role models because he was one that really started me getting into jazz playing. and the role of the guitar player in the band standing. Uh, I had a, a, a supervisor at one point who, for whatever reason that I still don't know to this day, just did not like me. And I was used to being the A student, I was used to being the teacher's pet. And so 10 years into my career, to walk into a political situation that was very difficult for me to navigate, that seemed to have nothing to do with me, um, and all of a sudden I was feeling like someone was trying to sabotage me. And uh, long story short, it worked out really well. The person wound up you know, losing their job, I wound up doing very, very well. But it's really important, I think, especially in the first several years of your career, to be clear about who you are and what defines you. Because there's always someone who will be willing to tell you that you can't do something, you're not good enough, you're not capable, and to really sort of have an internal uh, ability to say, is this about me or is this about them? And if it's not about me, then I can't own it, and I can't own what they're bringing to it. And sometimes, quite frankly, on the other side, it's important to say, you know what, maybe this is about me, and I need to do things differently, or I need to get myself together. So being really clear about where you are and where you stand in the pecking order is really important. Wasn't connected enough. Um, didn't have enough resources, wasn't knowledgeable enough about any industry, whether it was music, right? I wasn't connected to anyone who was in the music industry. I never did create a song before. I was never an artist. I never could play a musical instrument. I didn't have the resources to pull things together to make it happen. Um, at the same time in politics, right? It was that I was too young, right? I never had, I wouldn't have enough, again, resources is the key word. I would never have enough resources to be able to pull off the type of feats I've been able to pull off. And I was I was too young in the room and nobody really would give me attention or, or pay me attention and so those are the obstacles that I confront on a daily no matter what industry I chose to go in. I think a lot of the obstacles that I had were probably just my own limitations. I, I wasn't, it's kind of a weird answer, but I wasn't as aware of or thinking about external limitations. Um, I was working on the internet, it was a frontier. Um, there weren't a lot of preconceived notions of what this should be and what the, what the answers were. So it was the perfect place for me because we were trying different things and everybody's input was considered. There, there, were, there were no rules. What happened, I decided I had saved $60,000. I was gonna go in business for myself. I took a chance. I took a risk, R-I-S-K. 
Who's to say you can't put house in an R&B song? Who's to say you can't put R&B in a rap song, right? And so that's what I'm loving most about all these genres that are out there right now is the experimentation, of not afraid to go against the grain, using unconventional wisdom, unconventional methods, unconditional beats. I think it makes the music such an exciting time period right now. <clears throat> most kids today aren't into jazz or blues and R&B, and that's something that we haven't had in music for a long time. You know, a lot of the stuff is basically on a computer based or dealing with auto tune. And there's, there's no really like musical substance. I think me bringing back jazz is definitely different. A mentorship is the most valuable asset that someone can have, right? And no matter what stage you are, no matter if you're in high school, college, a young professional, or, or the age I am right now, I believe that we all need mentors along the way to guide us to new places that we want to go. You, keep, you surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. You surround yourself with people who are younger than you, thinner than you, cuter than you, prettier than you, especially bright. You really don't want to be with somebody who's not bright because they just bring you down. You want to bring some, that somebody uplifts right. you. You are enough and you don't need anything else and that you are able to make change. And then when you do good and you do things for the right reasons and you recognize that you are enough, great you things come you. The main to thing you. is just to push yourself. I say that's the main thing that you have to keep in mind. I recognize that it wasn't just on my own accord that's gotten me here, but that it was people who have helped me get here. Um, my family who has helped me get to the place I am right now. It was through my faith and my extreme belief in a higher power that's gotten to me where I am. And so I really believe in empowering the youth. When I was in junior high school, in high school, it was Black History Week. It was just one week. And then they extended it to a month. Now, wouldn't it be nice if our black children knew black history. They do not know their history. Black history, the story isn't told in its entirety. And I think that we miss out on some of, of our great ones who have given the ability for me to sit in this seat right now and, and to speak with such a great person like yourself, right? You know, we stand on the backs and shoulders of the Martins and the Malcolms and the Coretta's and, and, and the Rosa Parks and all the greats. But also, too, I think that needs to be discussed. But then I also think that we need to recognize modern day history makers, right? And I believe that there's so many blacks are making strides in, in our community and in society in the world on a day-to-day -day basis and so I think that needs to be celebrated and I think we need to allow ourselves to celebrate those achievements and to celebrate those accomplishments. So we have to continue Black History Month for the next 366 days since this is leap year. Every single day in a black child's life should be Black History Month. My name is Mike Muse, and what makes me a different tour is that I recognize the symbiotic relationships between pop culture and politics, and that's the lane that I choose to walk, run, and love and live in. And what makes me a different tour is that I was born outside of the box. And what makes me different tour is my love for jazz and being able to play it and then going against the natural ear of hearing pop. And I'm different tour because I march to the beat of my own drum, whether anyone else hears the music or not. What makes me different tour? my personality because she's got personality walk a personality talk a personality smile a personality i get over with my personality i'm out there loud big strong and happy and thankful to god and to everybody to the world they make me who I am.